no matter the location. From OAKLA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Today's show is brought to you by my good friends, Manscaped. You can get the perfect package at manscaped.com slash Raiders. You'll be able to save 20% and get free shipping. It'll be in the description below. It'll be in the comments for those of you watching this on live. Today's show, I'm going to dive into some of the players on the Raiders roster bubble. What does that mean? Guys, where if they got cut, wouldn't surprise me. Guys, if they made the team, it also wouldn't surprise me. Let's start here at the quarterback position. We're going to go from offense, work our way all the way down to defense. Derek makes the team. Marcus Mariota makes the team. The guy that I really want to talk about here is Nathan Peterman because he is 100% on the roster bubble. So he's already signed his $2.1 million restricted free agent tender. Remember, the Raiders placed a fifth round tender on him. But let's just say, you know, the Raiders want to keep extra depth at other positions, maybe like wide receiver. I think then that means you can move on from a guy like Peterman. But if you want to keep Peterman for the extra depth, I understand that. My argument would be, we also have Lynn Bowden. So in the worst case scenario, like worst case, Carr gets hurt, uh, Mariota gets hurt, we could turn to you know a guy like Lynn Bowden. So for me, Nathan Peterman, he's on the roster bubble. Let's go on and go to the running back position. Jacobs makes it, Richard makes it, Bowden obviously makes it. Ingold, you're safe too. The next players there that I'm really thinking about are on the roster bubble are Rod Smith and Devonta Booker. But first year, we'll start with Rod. And obviously, every player that I talk about, I want you guys to let me know whether or not you think he's going to make the team or not. So give me a Y for yes and for no in the comments, every single guy that I talk about. You're looking for a guy who's going to be able to really help Josh stay healthy. You want a big-time running back, a big running back, that's why you keep Rod Smith. If you don't want to keep a bigger running back and you're trying to save a little bit of money, maybe you move on from the fifth guy in your depth chart. Because I know the Raiders signed Rod Smith to the 910K. But they also went out and signed another running back in Devonta Booker. Now, he's going to make a little bit more, but the important number up there is only 50000 guaranteed. If you want a pass catching running back behind Jalen Richard, you keep Devonta Booker. However, for me, I'm like, does he make the practice squad? I think that's a little bit more realistic. In terms of making that final 53-man roster, I'm just not 100% sure. And when I think about a player that would really, really benefit from training camp and from preseason games, I'm really going to sit there and point my finger at Devonta Booker. That's why he's on the roster bubble. If you're looking for free content, free Raiders content, daily videos, we're the channel for you, okay? So for the next 365 days, I'm going to put out a Raiders video. I'm also going to do that for 100% free. So all I ask is you hit that subscribe button. And if you love the Raiders, hey, spread the love of the show because I'm trying to get to 49,000 subs by the end of June. So We've hit a little bit of a lull period, right? I mean, there's not much news, not much rumors, but I'm still coming out with daily vids. And I would like to be able to still do two live shows every single week, and I would hope I can still do my live show every Tuesday. The way that you can help me and support the show, it's 100% free. It's just by clicking that subscribe button. The link, it's below. Let's go to the wide receivers now, right? Ruggs, Williams, Renfro, Aguilar, I think they're safe. Um, it's really going to come down here for me with a guy like Zay Jones and also with a guy like Rico Gafford. I'll start here with Zay because Zay is a player to me where if you would ask me three months ago, I said Raiders would cut him. You can save $1.4 million, you move on from him. But now I'm seeing how much work he's putting in the offseason. If you want to talk about a player that's getting the most work with Derek, Zay Jones is definitely up there. But you signed Nelson Aguilar and you drafted three players who can play wide receiver in the draft. He's not the only guy, though. Rico Gafford. Why would the Raiders keep Rico Gafford? He brings a ton of speed to the offense, no doubt. If, let's say, the Hunter, Hunter, uh, Henry Ruggs injury is a little bit worse, maybe you keep Rico Gafford. But if he is your seventh receiver, and if Henry Ruggs is 100% healthy, why would you keep Rico? The only answer I can really come up with is speed. Now, I know some people think that he ran a 4-2. I'm sorry, he didn't run a 4-2-40. He does bring you a lot of versatility, but I do think it actually could really come down to keeping either Rico Gafford or Zay Jones. So, for argument's sake, that's what this show's about. Who would you keep? Type RG for Rico Gafford, or would you keep Zay Jones? I want you to type ZJ. Now, for those of you that are watching this live, I'm seeing uh, some RGs come in now. I see a ZJ coming in. Juan Polk says RG. Michael Freeman says ZJ. Elias Alvera says RG. So, if you watch this live, comment now. If you watch this at a later date, 
like Wednesday, hey, go down to the comments, YouTube, Facebook, doesn't matter, and vote. Time to go to the tight end position now, where Darren Waller, Foss Moreau, Jason Witten, y'all are good. Derek Carrier, to me, I think is also good, right? I think he's going to be able to make the team because the Raiders want to run three tight end sets. So, where does that exactly leave a player like Paul Butler? Because I think he is on the roster bubble, and remember, they re-signed Butler after Nick O'Leary retired. So, for Butler, that makes me a little bit worried. And for the team that wants to keep three tight ends, I think the only way you keep Butler, honestly, is if one of your top three guys goes down. Then that does leave you the ability to be able to keep Butler, who did play college football in, in California, Pennsylvania. But as much as I think Butler is an okay player in terms of depth, I would actually be pretty surprised if the Raiders did end up keeping him. Let's not go to where I think uh, we're really going to be able to win games this year on offense. It's in the trenches. And you got Colton Miller, Richie Incognito. I've already made the argument that I think that we have actually one of the best offensive lines in the entire National Football League. But you are going to have to move on for some players. I think that the Raiders end up keeping about nine offensive linemen. Remember, eight of those. Um, you do have to keep eight for, I believe, the final 48. I'm kind of twisting my words here a little bit. But we'll go to the five players that I think could be on the roster bubble for the Raiders. Brandon Parker, out offensive tackle. Um, if we had a better offensive tackle, I think Brandon Parker wouldn't make it. However, we are a little bit thin there. Jordan Debbie, he can play all over the offensive line, center, guard. He could even play a little bit of tackle. Sam Young, we brought him in. Andre James out of UCLA entering year three. He can play guard. He can also play center. And then Eric Cush, yes, it's spelled wrong. It's probably because, well, whoever was making this graphic was doing a little bit of Cush. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But bottom line here is roster bubble 2020 for the Raiders. We have a lot of pieces on the offensive line, and we are going to have to make some tough decisions. So I'm curious how this one goes, okay? I want you to vote. If you watch this on live, if you watch this on Wednesday, do you have the perfect package? If yes, I want you to like the video. So to our live viewers, we got 637 people watching, only 319 likes. So if you think that your package is perfect, I want you to like the video. If you're like, no, it's not the perfect package, I want you to type no, okay? So yes, like the video. No, well, you can type no. For those of you who type a no, I can help you out getting the perfect package. For those of you liking the video, hey, maybe you don't have this perfect package. You can get it at manscaped.com slash Raiders, where you're going to be able to save 20% and get free shipping. So why is it called the perfect package for Manscaped? Well, because your package will be perfect. Thanks to the Lawnmower 3.0, the best trimming kit for your genitals. Also, ball toner, ball deodorant, in case things get a little bit sweaty. It is the summer after all. And the most comfortable boxers you'd ever buy. Now, the product that I absolutely love is the Lawn Mower 3.0, which, yes, comes in the perfect package. Like, this company's slogan is your balls will thank you. They will give you every opportunity to make sure that your balls are thanking you. Plus, with the perfect package, you also get free boxers and that traveling kit and free shipping. All I'm trying to do here is help you all take care of your chucky head, take care of your black hole a little bit better. Go get the perfect package. It'll be in the comments. It'll be in the description. I see giant dwarf, giant dwarf in the comments says ball toner. Yeah, it's a real thing. You can get that at manscaped.com slash Raiders. Let's all go to the defensive line, shall we? And I think this one's pretty simple. The four guys you see on screen, they're making the team. But in terms of defensive tackle, that's where I really want to hit here, and I also want to really hit here on defensive end and a player in Arden Key, a guy with that, man, I think we would all agree. We want to see the best version of Arden Key because when he does play, he's sometimes very good. Also, he's also that player where I'm like third and ten or the team's getting ready to punt or it's like third and five, he goes offside, right? I mean, he's very frustrated. If he can turn his talent in production, this isn't even a question, but – the fact that the Las Vegas Raiders did invest in Carl Nassib this offseason does make me a little bit worried that Arden Key could be on the outside looking in. Let's now go to the defensive tackle position where we have Daniel Ross. And this is one where I definitely want to know yes or no on Daniel Ross. Because for me, it's a yes if Rod Marinelli really likes him because, well, he's a new defensive line coach. And obviously, you bring in Ross for a reason. But in my opinion, he's the fifth best defensive tackle entering the 2020 season. I think it really comes down to P.J. Hall and Daniel Ross and whether you think who's better there. You know, you could type B.R. for Daniel Ross or P.J. for P.J. Hall. 
I think that's where it's going to come down to at the defensive tackle position. Let's dive in now to the linebackers where we made a significant upgrade with Corey Littleton, Nick Krakowski, they're safe. But really besides those two guys, I think you could actually make an argument for just about every single person on the screen minus Tanner Moos because, let's face it, we drafted him in uh, round three, traded up for him. He's, he's going to make the team. But then you have Nicholas Morrow, Mark Kelly, both players that I think you can make an argument for. But, excuse me, as I burp off screen, you guys can't see it. The player that I really want to talk about here, it's Kyle Wilber. Because if you keep Kyle Wilber, that means you're just kind of keeping your sixth linebacker. And as much as I think that he can be important on special teams, do you really want to keep Kyle Wilber? But the fact that I think the way that he does make the team is his contribution to special teams. So one of the reasons why he was re-signed by this Raiders team is, remember, Rich Bisacci is the special teams coordinator. He also coached Kyle Wilber back with the Dallas Cowboys. And now that Versace's are on our team, the fact that Rod Marinelli's here, as much as I hate to admit it, I do think some of these past Cowboys coaches are going to have an influence on John. So if you want to be able to keep a solid special teams player, if you want to be able to keep a veteran who knows what you got to do, that's how Kyle Wilber ends up making this team. So we're talking about players on the roster bubble, right? To make sure my roster bubble here at Chat Sports doesn't get shattered, I need 790 more subscribers by the end of June. I love being able to make videos. I love what we have here at the Raiders Report. I think we are unlike any channel, but I do need your help. So take the link that you see below, youtube.com slash Raiders Report, and send it to all your biggest Raider fans that you know. Because if I don't get the 49K subs by the end of June, we might have to do one less video a week. I don't want that to happen. I need 790 more subs by the end of the month. Let's now go to the defensive backfield where I think Mullen, Joyner, Randall, Abram, Prince of Mukamara, they're all safe. But obviously, you can't keep all these guys, right? And I think the five biggest players that are on the roster bubble when I look at the defensive backfield, I think it's these five guys here. You have Dalen Levitt, who I've interviewed, go check it out, where you brought in Jeff Heath. Does that mean you're going to keep Levitt? We'll see. Uh, Keyshawn Nixon, a player who I know has been putting in a lot of work, but again, we go out and add Prince of Mukamara. You have players in the draft. Where's Keyshawn Nixon fit? Ken Crawley, I do think that he's unfortunately going to get cut. DJ Killings, another player, very young, only 22 years old, but probably has a better shot at making the practice squad. And then Nevin Lawson. Nevin Lawson, if he wasn't suspended for week one, I'd say I don't really think he's on this list. I think he makes the team easily, but if you're worried about the kind of work he's been putting in, if you're worried about him being ready to go, you can see maybe the Raiders move on from Lawson. Let's go to special teams now before we're done here with the show. And I want you guys to remember, go in the comments, always giving your opinion. If you haven't liked the video yet, I would appreciate a like. Where you got Daniel Carlson, AJ Cole, Trent Seig. The real competition's here. Roster bubbles between Carlson, the kicker, and also the other kicker, Dominic Eberle. But first here, let's hit Carlson. Because back in 2018, Carlson for the Raiders was great. Was 18 and 19 with the Raiders. He got cut by the Vikings because he was 0 for 3 in one game. But last year, did struggle, was only 19 to 26 with a long of 48. But then let's talk about the Raiders kicker, the UDFA, who they brought in, Dominic Eberle, born and raised in Germany. And uh, 21 to 24 last year at Utah State. Has had videos of himself kicking over 50 yarders on IG. He's a good kid. It's just a matter of who's going to win the kicker job because really, you're only going to keep one. Now, we went through actually 22 players. Hopefully, we did it rather quickly. But if there's somebody that I missed, or if you're somebody like Mitch, why don't you talk about this guy or maybe take a little bit of a deeper dive? Hey, throw them in the comments section below. Raider Nation, what's going on? Is this the number one Raiders channel on YouTube? For Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here. I'm giving you Chucky Heads news, rumors, Raider Nation rumors. And look at this, I'm making your life easier. Check out my next video. Thanks for watching and go Raiders.